Greetings everyone, the good Sir Knight here, and today we are going to be doing a very special review because Charlie's in the trees. So today's review, as you can tell by my lovely sling here, will be based on the M79 grenade launcher, this particular model made by King Arms from Taiwan. So as you can see, we have the full body launcher. They do make the cutoff version, the sawed off version, which saws off right here, hence no uh, front sight post and also back here at the back end of the handle. Even this little grip and then this saw it forward so that you can still grip it and it only takes up the space that your hands would need. So you save quite a bit of room, but it only has a single sling swivel down at the bottom here. So this one has two sling swivels built into it. And we, as you can see, we've already got our uh, sling set up here. A little uh, cheap little sling, but effective nonetheless. And let's see. so. The M79 is one of the earliest grenade launchers ever to be invented based on the high-low system and everything. After, shortly after World War II and used for Vietnam, and then it was replaced by the M203 to combine the firepower into two guns. Now personally, particularly for airsoft-wise, I like to have my two guns separate, which is why I initially had a S-Thunder with a little rail on the metal to type. And I already spray-painted that glow in the dark green because it's just obnoxious, but this is a, a real classic. Now this is only two kilograms. So that's okay, no, okay, pretty lightweight and everything. I've got my belt here with grenades. So we're going to be doing a little testing. Not with any BBs, because my apartment's small and fragile enough, but the thing is, it does have a bit of wobble to it here at the uh, rotation point. So supposedly the, uh, was it the Kraft Apple Works that was recommended to me doesn't have that problem. Now, as far as the uh, basics and everything, now it does look cool as all hell. That's the important part, but for your little uh, leaf sight, it'll stay pretty much down here. A little bit of wobble, it's locked in from this mechanism here. To use it, press down on this and lift the latch. You can adjust the setting from here. It has settings all the way up to, uh, what is it, 375 meters, so that you can use this to adjust to the sight, or you can keep it closed and use the standard pistol sight, or little pistol aperture with the uh, leaf sight here. So, pretty cool. Nice little stuff. Now to open it, it only opens one way. This top little thumb latch here rotates to the left and I'll pop it open from the breech. Now for the uh, removal, there's this little uh, nubby here. Probably gonna wanna uh, lubricate that because it's locked in by a spring and that's basically what's gonna push your grenade back out. Now this does, when you close it, rub against here a little bit. Probably also good to keep some grease or something on there to prevent damage when you're done. So as you set it back, the locking latch will return to place. Your safety is back here, although you would probably never really end up using the safety. So downwards is safe, forwards is fire. Now, as far as some Vietnam history stuff, a lot of people didn't trust the safety, which is understandable. Although the grenade does require several rotations to detonate, the fact that it would be a 40 millimeter casing going through your leg or whatever it happened to be pointed at is pretty problematic. So with all that taken into account, Rest that up on here. It is pretty comfy. It's uh, small enough. Now the problem I've been having, at least for the while, is trying to keep this back mounted. Now if you put it back here, it sits okay. It's a little bit on the back, but with the plate carrier that should help out a bit. But if you have any sort of backpack or anything on, that's going to be a bit more problematic. So you'd probably want to keep it to the left side of the backpack. But now it's also got the, it's got the bit free, but it's easy to access. But the problem is, with the most shoulder straps on most plate carriers, it's going to be pushed out towards the outside of the arm. Which means as soon as you rotate or turn around or anything, it's going to fly free. So, probably a slung weapon catch will help with that. Particularly on the left side of the plate carrier. Let me see, actually. Slung weapon catch, yeah, it does open the other way. So you could probably keep the weapon catch open and just keep this stuck in on the side a bit. Just enough so it doesn't run away on its own free accord or anything. But really keeping the strap in place is going to be the largest problem I've been having to deal with. And no matter where I've looked online or the various techniques I've tried, I've yet to solve that singular issue. Now, unless you want your grenade launcher to be your primary weapon, which is going to be a little odd, because uh, that's going to be, well, I guess if you have enough handgun mags, you can run around, well, particularly running around, this thing's light and it's really comfy, run around, pop someone real quick, and then instantly handgun. Just handgun everything. And I guess if you need to reload the handgun, throw this over here real quick and you got free hands to do your reloads and everything. So that's cool. That is a option. If you want to be running it as more of a backup rune clearing weapon while you stay towards the back, and obviously you're not going to be able to push as hard forward carrying 
arguably two primary weapons. A smaller submachine gun, an MP5K or something around those lines would be great, because you could keep that single point and still keep this on a two point out of the way. But yeah, it seems to really just be a matter of how to get this sling to stay locked, particularly right here, which I'm sure I could find a gear tie or something to lock that down. Actually, yeah, I might give that a shot. I've got a few gear ties, and then since that's locked down, it's just keeping the weapon from flying free, so that plus the slung weapon catch is going to slow changing weapons, but yeah, you get the point. Anyway, other than these considerations you're going to be having, and this is arguably the sexiest grenade launcher in the world, so. Now the little trigger guard can also be rotated, pressing down on this button here, it'll rotate to the left, rotate back to the center, and rotate it to the right. Why? I don't particularly know, I mean, I guess it's something if you like to do, then yeah, you can do it. So that's cool, and now my thing is stuck. Well then, now this little bevel decided it's going to move on its own. Well, not a big issue. A bit of a problem. Oh, there we go. Lock that back center. Okay, so yeah, trigger swivel's going to be a little, little cheeky. Bit of wobble. The buttstock also moves a bit, but that's just screwed in there by two screws. And the rubber stock, I mean, probably a lot nicer on the real one, but yeah. All in all, comfortable weapon. I know I've been rambling to be here, so let's uh, do some little tests. Now we're just going to make sure, for one, it fires the grenade. So starting with, we have our basic little palm grenades. Loads in there, as you can see it sits back a bit of the way, so you can pull it back out due to the uh, little piece here. When you close it, it locks perfectly fine into place. Now, as far as firing, a lot of the firing, people like to talk about the sound it makes, but it all comes down entirely to the grenade. The launcher is more of a formality. So, test one. I hope there's no BBs in here. Okay, cool. So it makes a nice little funk noise, and everything's good. Take the shell out. And where's my dump pouch? There's my dump pouch. And then, next shell on up. So as you can see, easy, quick to reload. And, alright, again, though there's not a lot of gas in these, because I was using a mostly empty can, but I just wanted to prove to you that, at least conceptually, it does fire and you can reload it arguably quickly. So all that stuff's pretty cool. Now we're going to fire something with an actual projectile. Only a single projectile you guys might recognize. This is my fun grenade. The vehicle tagger. And it's basically just fun to sort of shoot at things or play a dodgeball with. And this one will go. I didn't fly nearly sorry that made a really hard springy noise to it it needed a bit more power now there are threads in the barrel that make things a bit more interesting so if you look in here there's a few little threads and there we go they're just straight threads i guess to keep things from rubbing against the side the barrel is made out of a aluminum alloy and the stock is real wood as well as the grip here so that gives you an idea of how it works it is incredibly lightweight you can one hand this if you want to look particularly cool but yeah, as far as keeping it slung to your body, that seems to be the trickiest problem. But it's a cool launcher, it's fun to carry around, and I mean, if you need to have a grenade launcher, I'd rather have this than a 203 personally, just because the 203 is putting the added weight on top of your rifle, and it's going to be far forward to the front, which will make your weapon front heavy. Whereas this has a relatively heavy stock and heavy front port, the portion on the front is heavy enough to drop forward on its own cord, and then you just back up to close it. So, cool, simple, to the point. Now, as far as the price, this is arguably the cheaper of the uh, ones I've seen available, be coming in at about $230 on sale. Still expensive and very niche. I don't know how often you're going to end up using it, unless you're going to be doing the crazy run them down and handgun plan, which I mean, hey, it's an option, it's cool. But uh, yeah, all in all, super sexy gun, very sexy powers, and great sexy history, and it's actually still in use mostly by special forces and a few other countries throughout the world today. The reason being is the sufficiently longer barrel compared to an M203 or a Milcor MGL. Now that gives you the longer range of about, what, 375 meters like I mentioned earlier, where the others are going to fall a lot shorter than that. So whereas you get the easier, or the easy ease of use and all the fanciness in the 203 with the multiple shots with the multiple grenade launcher this will have range over both of them whilst remaining incredibly lightweight. Now of course the 
Slinging at issue is there, but of course in Vietnam this was considered a primary weapon, with the alternative being like a trench gun, a uh, grease gun, or like an M16A1, which wasn't notoriously popular for effectiveness, so although you couldn't use this in incredibly close quarters effectively, you could, as a support member, do all sorts of devastating damage, particularly against the Viet Cong, so cool weapon, well balanced, feels good, and uh, I do like it, so. It has a very simple job that it accomplishes quite nicely, which is just to launch grenades. Now, of course, the grenades are going to be asininely expensive, beyond all reason, each one basically constituting their own firearm, but that's really what it all comes down to, so it's nice, I like it, and as long as you can find a way to keep it slung without it running free and trying to escape or do whatever nonsense it wants to do, I'm sure if I could put maybe a pouch, ooh, actually, yeah, if I just put a pouch right here on the plate carrier, that would keep it from sliding around, and then just some sort of a gear lock or something here to keep the sling in place, that would solve the problem just fine, and then it would just have to be a matter of releasing the gear lock, pulling this uh, forward a bit, and getting this over said pouch to get it free. That might work. I will give that a shot. I will be uploading. When I do finally figure this out, it's got to be possible. There's no way it's not possible. When I get figured out, it'll probably end up in the pro tip section, which is where I like to put stuff that has tormented me for weeks, days, months, hours on end that I finally found a sort of solution to to make my life easier. So, that being said, give me your lunch money. No, like, seriously. Lunch money. Oh, yeah. Ah, lunch money. I should go get lunch, actually. It's getting close to noon, so that is my fun review. I hope you guys like the nonchalant grenade launching. We'll uh, get some actual launches on people here in the upcoming months or weeks. I'll probably end up carrying my shotgun on my back and charging headlong with the grenade launcher first and foremost. Then we'll putting this back in place, transition to a pistol, making sure they're far enough away, and then freeing up a shotgun. So. Cheers everyone, I'll be looking forward to you having fun with this and you guys in the near future. And uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching, hope this review filled in some questions you might have had about buying this, if you had some key concerns or anything about what it was like or if you really wanted one. Although, it, do you really need one? Probably not. If you want to be a really, really classy mofo, then yes, just for the hell of it, if nothing else. See how many grenades you can get a hold of. Get a 12-round uh, belt or a bandolier or something and just go ham. Have fun with it. I mean, Aerosol's about having fun, so if that's what it takes is a few grenades and a grenade launcher and a team that'll give you close support while you run up around a bunker and go BAM, then yeah, by all means, highly recommend it. Other than that, it is expensive and I do believe the uh, sawed-off version will be far more portable and easy to access for the most part. But yeah, we'll figure all that out, and uh, we'll have some fun here in the near future. So cheers, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.